actually is the Australian Society of Australian Genealogists? Well, it's a, a membership society, um, which was actually formed in 1932. So we're just about to enter our 70th year. And we really, we exist to help people trace their family history, to sort of foster an interest in family history, to have the resources available to help people in tracing their family trees, and also to act as a repository so that when people have actually done their research, when they've put together their information, they've got somewhere to leave it so that other people in the future perhaps can then come in here and benefit from that research that's already been done. Um, so and, that's and what we do. what actually is your role in society? Uh, I often say I think I just run around in ever decreasing <laughs> circles and I'm sure I do. Yeah. Do people have to be a member <clears throat> of the society to use the facilities? They don't have to be members but we do encourage them to be mm. members if possible because mm. I think it's only if you're a member that you really get the most out of the society. Mm. So that in order to really benefit from all that we have to offer it's best for people to be members. Mm. If you do that it then means that uh, you get our quarterly journal, you can, you're advised of all the lectures and workshops and things that we run mm. and that I think is, is some of the main benefits for people mm. and that sense of belonging I think is something that a lot of people enjoy because there's a real genealogical fellowship yeah. and yes. I often say some of the, the best family history is done in the kitchen yes. uh, really <laughs> where people sit around yeah. talking. That's so. right. um, are there, do, do you employ any experts or make use of any experts? We're very fortunate in that we have lots of experts on our, our books, but mostly as, as volunteers, as members. Mm -hmm. uh, the staff are really, we have a professional librarian, but our staff are really employed more for their administrative skills and yeah. their genealogical knowledge. But of course, the top genealogists all tend to be members of the society here anyway. Mm -hmm. So we can draw on all sorts of experience. So if you've got a Scottish problem or a heraldry problem, or an Australian convict problem, we can probably find someone who is one of the best people in that field to answer those questions and to help you. Wouldn't get much and done in a day, would you? A lot of people come in thinking they're going thinking, to get a lot done in a day, will. that's the problem. Yes. And they think, oh, it'll only take me a day to trace yeah, my family history right. or to find out what I want mm. to know. Mm. And then, of course, what happens is they, they realise that it's mm. going to take them a lot longer than that. Mm. Heather, has the internet had an impact on the membership? Um, I think the internet's having a huge yes. impact on family history yes. and on the way everyone's yeah. doing research. Yeah. They used to say with family historians that they kept Australia Post in business by the number of letters and that they yes. used to write. Yeah. And I'm sure these days um, the same thing applies with a lot of the service providers, mm. ISP people, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. family historians love to communicate with other family historians mm -hmm. around the world mm -hmm. and getting home and checking your emails at oh, night and right. seeing how many <laughs> new family days. history contacts yeah. you've got. <laughs> is a, a huge buzz for people. Mm. So it's had that effect, it's mm. brought that communication mm. so much closer. Mm. Because research that used to take you weeks to do, mm. you can now do in a, a couple of hours sometimes mm. on the internet. Mm. But it has also, I think, created the false impression for some people that you can do it all mm. on the internet. Mm. Because there are lots of databases starting to appear, mm. people who don't have much knowledge of how to trace a family history um, start out mm. by logging into some of those databases, mm. get lots of people of the right family name and think, oh, you know, I'm mm. away, I've started tracing yeah. the family tree. Yeah. And they still need places like us here because mm. we've still got a lot of the records right. that aren't right. going to appear yeah. on the internet yeah. and probably never will. No. Mm. So, what yeah. are the more interesting um, primary records that you have here? Well, um, the primary records, that collection is really a unique set of records that we hold. Mm. And we're one of the few societies in Australia and certainly around the world that have a collection like that. Uh, in this building we have a, a basement area where we have a huge compactus and we store down there all the family history material that people have given to us. Mm. So not the published books, not the things that ever get out on the shelves, mm. but the sorts of research that we all do and we all intend to one day get around mm. to writing up the family history and publishing it, but often we don't. Mm. So the sort of things we might have down there might just be a couple of pages that someone has given us of their family history that they've mm. written out. Right. Or it might actually be even um, their life's work that's come into the society, mm. all of their research papers. Mm. So if you can hit on a family that mm. somebody has already lodged material with us here, mm. then it can save you a lot of time yes. and there's some fantastic material down there yeah. in that primary records collection. What are some of the common mistakes that people make? I think people often forget their ancestors were human. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the common mistakes that people make. Mm -hmm. 
and they presuppose that they will always have done things in the same way all the time. In sequence. Yeah, mm. and they also think, well, because one person was Roman Catholic, all the family is going to be Roman mm. Catholic. They mm. won't have skipped and, yes. and changed religions. Yeah. And people make mistakes with little things like mm. surnames, mm. which in family history are so important mm. because what we're all doing, of course, is tracing a particular family name. Mm. People tend to think that a name like, let's say, Clark, you know, they might spell it C-L-A-R-K, mm. so they will ignore spellings of C-L-A-R-K-E mm. or C-L-E-R-K mm -hmm. and C-L-E-R-K-E because yeah. they'll say, oh, no, that's not the way my mm. family spelt it. Mm. And if they do that, they tend to miss mm. lots of mm. records. And that's a very mm. common mistake that people make. Do you think also make. with Christian names? Yeah, yeah, people tend to wear blinkers yes. sometimes when yeah. they're doing research. Yeah. So the fact that someone went through life being known as Lizzie Mm. They go in the records looking for them as Elizabeth, not mm. realising they might have been mm. Mary Sarah Elizabeth, yes. but they became Lizzie. <laughs> Which is and the that's, most common. That's the sort of thing that, that happens. I've found. And mm. I know one lady who spent literally months going through the English birth, death, mm. marriage indexes looking for a particular birth of someone who was called Lizzie, I think it was something like Lizzie Hooper. And of course, there were hundreds and hundreds of Elizabeth Hoopers. Mm. She kept applying for certificates to try and find the right one. Costly. And it was exactly that. In the yeah. end, the Elizabeth Elizabeth was about yeah. a third name, yes. yeah. um, but there was the record she was looking for. She'd just mm. not been sort of looking a little bit wider than, mm. than what she thought it was mm. going to be. That's a very common mm. problem that mm. people, people make all the time, mm. yeah. Heather, uh, the, the Society of Australian Genealogists, where you're working, is New South Wales organisation. What other organisations are there in Australia? There are similar family history societies and genealogical societies around Australia in all the capital cities and some of those have quite large collections and very long established uh, organisations with very good resources. So in each state it's possible for people to make contact with an organisation like us and they will be able to get help and you'll find all those listed in the yellow pages under family history societies. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Heather, for this morning. It was really informative. We good. really enjoyed it. It was great. I think the kettle's boiling, so how about we have a cup of tea? Yes. Sounds very good. Yeah, yeah, a cup of wattle seed biscuits. Yeah.